Welcome everybody to a New Gen Gamers documentary. Today we are taking a look at the Microsoft Xbox. As you can see, the big box X on the top, circle in the middle with Xbox. Pick it up here in the front. We have four controller ports, as you can see there. Uh, the top button is your disc eject button, and the bottom button is your power button. Hold that. Flip that over for us, Luke. On the back side of the console, we have. Uh, here is our Ethernet port, which allowed for Xbox Live gameplay. Here we have our video input and our power source. Now, a couple of things that made the Xbox distinct were, first of all, its original controllers. The original controllers for them were pretty massive, as you can see. Put that on top of the Xbox. Xbox was not a small console. This is what was called the Duke controller. We have big black and white buttons on the top. Because it was large and in charge. There's your four face buttons, your two triggers. Start in the center. Giant Xbox logo on this one. And here we have the, uh, the two triggers. And right here is the spots where you put your memory cards. Now, compare that, if you will, to the redesigned S controller. You have the black and white buttons on the bottom, the face buttons, a more concave um, analog stick on this side, and about the similar one as the other one on this side. As you can see, the D-pad's a little more um, protruded there. And on the back, you still have your um, triggers and your memory card slots. Now, this console had something I had never seen on another console. Breakaway the, controllers. Which was handy. If you tripped on the thing, this would just pull apart, and the console would not faceplant all over your floor. Right. The controllers would actually break away from the system. Now, this little piece right here is if you wanted to play DVDs on your console. You just plug into one of your controller ports here, and it came with a remote. I don't really think that was such a good idea, though, in hindsight, because, well, they used a crappy laser, and uh, lots of times that was the first thing they go on the console. Well, that's true, which is probably when they also made it a separate add-on rather than kind of touting it out of the box. Now, I'm going to show you real quick a couple of the games on the console. They all came in kind of standard DVD cases. Um, here's one of the Platinum Hit line. Uh, we have Max Payne here. Now, if you notice, this is something I love about this game. Inside the R here at the bottom is a bullet silhouette. Oh, uh, for the Remedy logo. Yeah. Now, on the back, they would tell you what options it would be able to do. Can't really get it in focus here. But it would show you, like, how many players, how much memory, um, whether it supported custom soundtracks. Custom soundtracks were very useful as far as you could put your own music onto the system and play it during the game. We actually didn't show that off during our commentary. But we did talk about how it took forever to load the music on there. Now this is true. Um, now your standard ones had the black top and um, Xbox logo where the Platinum Hits had the silver top. And um, they also released a lot of collector's editions during this time. Here's the Halo 2 collector's edition. As you can see, it comes in um, an aluminum case outside of uh, the typical plastic cases. All right. That's our system overview for the uh, Microsoft Xbox. Let's get ready and play some of these. All right. Sounds like a plan. Welcome everybody to another New Gen Gamers Console Wars of the Past. 
Today we are taking a look at one of the most iconic games for the Microsoft Xbox. And chances are you recognize it uh, whenever we were looking at the pills as opposed to the big bungee symbol. <laughs> My name's Ray. This My is name's Luke. Luke. And we're going to start off our look at the Xbox here with some multiplayer cooperative Halo. Let me make sure the uh, look up, look down. Okay, that's right. <laughs> oh, you select that one. I'll select this one, you select that one. Right. Where do you want to go? Truth and reconciliation? Sure. Let's do this on normal. Okay. Do you want to do it on Legendary? I was thinking we'd go back to easy. No, let's do it on normal. <laughs> Alright. Okay, whatever. Now, to go into a little bit about Halo, would you like to um, tell everyone about the game, Luke? Um, It's a first-person shooter. It was basically what got the console up and running. I mean, this is what started the whole... Uh, this is what started the masses for the LAN parties. Oh yeah. Halo 1 produced a lot of LAN parties. On college campuses, high school basements, all over the place. And before this, uh, Bungie, the developer, mm -mm. actually started as a puzzle company. Yeah, they were making puzzle games. Yeah, for the PC. So, what made them turn from a puzzle maker into um, a first-person shooter maker? I think this was just something they tried, and were like, hey... This is for us. Well, remember they made Marathon before they made Halo. You were saying they made Marathon before they made Halo? Yeah. Uh, it's a downloadable on the Xbox 360 Arcade if you want to take a look at that. Hmm. Haven't played it. I might have to check that out. Yeah, check it out. It's on the live arcade. And I went and killed myself. <laughs> I'm good at that in shooters. It happens to the best of us. I'm sure you'll get over it. I will try to respawn you. Okay. If you could respawn me, that'd be awesome. Um, this was one of the launch titles for the Xbox, and as we were saying, one of the ones that basically got it off the ground. I mean, if you own an Xbox in the first year or so, chances are you bought it for Halo. I'm gonna say, if you didn't buy it for Halo, then... You bought it for Fusion Frenzy? Yeah, I don't think so. <laughs> if if that's the case, you were pretty much just throwing money down tubes. Well, Fusion Frenzy wasn't that bad of a game. Oh, no. But by comparison... And before anyone gives me any crap, I'm not the best first-person shooter person. Not really my genre, so cut me some slack. <laughs> I think I've played enough different types of game to not get any crap for this. <laughs> um, 
the story of Halo actually begins with Steve Jobs, believe it or not. Um, he announced it during the Macworld conference in July of 99. And the idea was that it was going to be a um, Mac game. That turned out to not be the case as things went along. But um, they had privately shown it, and it was a much different form than what it was. Halo actually went through a couple of different forms. Um, it was originally supposed to be a third-person action game. And went through a little bit of a metamorphosis. Um, there was also a version that... Um, Kind of looked like Halo Wars, wasn't it? No. Anyways, sorry. When you're co-oping, things can get a little bit lost. But um, what ended up happening is Microsoft acquired Bungie with the sole purpose of making Halo a launch title for the Xbox system that they had had in development. We'll go a little bit more into the development of the original Xbox a little later in the commentary here. Um, Halo was breaking records pretty much as soon as it came out. I mean, that this this game sold a lot of Xboxes. Soundtrack was no slouch either. Oh no, it had some great music in it. In fact, people have become obsessed with that pretty much all over the world. It's kind of ridiculous. Well, okay, maybe just the U.S., but... Still. Yeah, not not quite so much Japan, which we will uh, also get into as Microsoft was having a little trouble selling the console in Japan. Yeah. But um, in its initial release, it pretty much sold... Um, was sold with about 50% of the Xboxes sold. So about half the people that bought an Xbox had this game within the same transaction as when they were buying their Xbox. Right, right. Um, by two, the middle of 2003, it had already sold 3 million copies. And by the end of its lifespan, and I, I don't even believe this is counting the Xbox Originals version of this, it had sold 5 million retail copies. Which puts it in the top 20 range of games sold for all time. I don't have my sniper rifle anymore. Uh, that's pretty par for the course. Probably because I died too much. Happens to the best of us. Hello, kitty, and how are you today? Uh, come on now, Ray. I believe in you. Uh, you need to stop shooting the wall, unless you've killed everything. Uh, I was checking to see if I had killed everything. <laughs> nope, there's still some down there. <laughs> Thank you, unlimited ammo. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> that's where it's at. All right, I think we got that. It is easy to get lost into this game. And thus why there have been a couple silent moments where we're just kind of like, hey, we're in the game. Yeah. We may end up with that a lot as long as we're doing uh, <laughs> co-op. So yeah. we'll try to keep it to a lot of single-player experiences throughout the rest of the commentary. When it seems like all is lost, 
when it feels as if you have no hope. When you are outnumbered, overpowered, and they've got you cornered. That's when you realize your last best hope is you. Halo, Combat Evolved, rated M for Mature.